Well, now it's time for our next guest. Do Dr. Lisa Littman, famously known as New York City's celebrity veterinarian, is one of the most followed and socially influential veterinarians in the U.S. with high-profile clients and patients. As a go-to source for expertise in pet health and safety, Dr. Littman serves as the lead New York veterinarian at Fuzzy Pet Health. Here to give us the tips and tricks to keeping our pets safe and healthy in the summer is Dr. Lisa Littman. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Great. Well, Dr. Lisa Littman, thank you for coming. Thanks thank you for, for being me. here. Um, we all love pets. We all love dogs. Yes. Um, <laughs> summer is here. And, yes. and with summer, I feel like pets are out more. They're running around more. What are some best ways to keep our pets safe during yeah, the summer? Yeah, it's a good question because this summer has hit like a ton of bricks also. Yes. So it is just crazy hot out there. So really the best advice I can give with these like 100 degree high humidity temperatures, especially for flat faced breeds, just keep them indoors as much as possible. Um, if they are going to go outside, you definitely want to know what to look for if they're getting tired. Um, so signs of heat stroke would be what we're really concerned about. Um, um, things like red gums, slowing down, excessive panting, and then of course collapse. And so we, we don't want to get to that point. Right. Yeah, we, my, my brother and his girlfriend just adopted a Dalmatian, and we, oh, we were yeah. by the pool, but we were we were a little worried. It was so hot. We yeah. had him in the shade, but he was panting a lot. We were like all freaking out. My brother, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. He was fine, but yeah. it was definitely a concern with this heat that he was, because you know, because clearly we can't communicate with him. Right through tel telepathy yet. Yeah, but, I always yeah. ask them to talk to me, they still don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, with, with, of course, you know, we have July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor Day, these big holidays, fireworks, loud noises. I feel like yeah. dogs sometimes freak out. How do we try to keep dogs like under control? For sure, and it's, a, it's an issue too, even with thunderstorms that happen. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, good rule of thumb would be definitely to keep them indoors, keep them safe. Uh, you can lower the blinds, turn on some quiet music, even the TV, mm. um, and then also, yeah, if it's really that bad, definitely talk to your veterinarian. We have a lot of modalities and drugs that we can use to make things better. Um, but really, and making sure that they have proper identification on them because if they get nervous and they get loose, we want to make sure we can find them. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. And what are some signs of heat stroke in puppers? Yeah, so um, excessive panting, really slowing down, not wanting to walk. I've seen some dogs just like, they just stop. They'll just kind of plop on the street. Um, and then uh, red and gums collapse. So they can be kind of subtle at first, and it can really get out of hand very quickly. So again, if you're not sure, just bring them inside. Yeah, and what do you, um, what's your take on giving ice to dogs? Because some people are like, no, yeah. it's bad. Some people are like, it's cool. Yeah, I love this one. Um, so basically, I have no problems at all with my clients giving ice. There is a big... Uh, like a big myth that goes around every year that it scares everybody that giving ice to dogs can kill them, essentially. Oh my God, exactly. Why is and that? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, there could be nothing further from the truth. What's the logic behind mm. that? The lot, well, it, per, yeah. per the myth, they yeah. say that it can cause dogs to bloat, uh, which is sort of when the stomach turns on its axis and can be really deadly. Um, but there's absolutely no truth to that. Huh. So okay. if do I love ice. It's a great no-calorie treat. If I was as easily amused as dogs with ice, I'd yeah. be very happy. <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, so I still see so many dogs in cars, and it's very scary. I'm always very worried. What What do you think about that? Are people People are still risking it out there, even with the little window crack. Yeah, I, I would not risk it. I mean, I cannot emphasize that enough. Heat stroke within the car and outside, heat stroke is really one of the worst emergencies I have ever seen, mm. no joke. So uh, the temperature in a car can rise by about 20 degrees in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So in like an 80 degree day, it's gonna be 100 degrees in 10 minutes. So it can, can, can turn deadly extremely quickly. Don't do it. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always it's freak so out when I see a dog in a car, and I'm like, I hope their owner is like a couple minutes yeah. away. But then I'm like, should I call the cops? I don't want to be that lady who's calling the cops. Call the cops. I mean, because by the time they get there, the dog's still in the car. And in some states, it actually is illegal oh. or now legal oh. for you to even break the window. Oh. Um, wow. But yeah, it's crazy. And the other thing is dogs don't sweat. So they have no way to really cool themselves very well yeah. or evaporate sweat. So they, they overheat that much, right. that much quicker. Oh. Yeah, and lots of summer parties that people bring their dogs to and things like that. I know my dog is probably wanting to eat all the food at the barbecue. <laughs> what are some human foods that are okay for dogs and some that are a big no-no? Yeah, so in general, I think foods like uh, watermelon, 
blueberries. Watermelon's always very popular with <laughs> Bananas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was loving it. He literally yeah. ate so much watermelon. It's great. It's great. Um, yeah, and so, you know, we treat our pets like family. I love giving my dog fresh food as treats as well. I'd say know your list of toxic foods, the things to stay away from. Yeah. Um, and then you'll be, you'll be pretty good. So things like grapes, raisins, onions, garlic, chocolate macadamia nuts, and anything with xylitol in it. So it's a pretty good list. Just stay away from those, and then okay. you should be pretty covered. Good so. to know. And do, um, can all dogs swim? Oh, yeah, I love this one too. Um, no, so dogs actually really need to be taught to swim. Um, you know, even the breeds that were meant to swim, you want to ease them into it. Not all dogs love water. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's definitely a big myth. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know um, when people go on vacation, some people try to bring their dogs. What are some tips for sort of acclimating your dog to a new environment? Yeah, I think it's, it's that's definitely very dog dependent. So it's kind of like, you know, some people like traveling. I have a big fear of planes. So uh, it's gonna be really dependent on your dog. Some dogs are just very social. But things that you can do would be um, bringing any items from home, like their own blankets, toys, treats, make sure that you have their food, make sure they have proper identification in case they get lost. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just going with, you know, how, how your dog really tolerates it. Sure. And you're the lead veterinarian at Fuzzy Pet Health? Yeah. So what do you guys do? Uh, the New York lead veterinarian yeah, at Fuzzy Pet Health. Yeah, so Fuzzy is a membership-based house call veterinary practice uh, where the mission is to make veterinary care more affordable and accessible. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's so convenient. It's so great for the pet. We really provide a fear-free environment. We also have a telemedicine aspect where you can talk to a veterinary assistant or a veterinarian 365 days a year. So no more Dr. Google. Um, if you have any questions, you can come and just get, you know, have that support, which is amazing. It must be a relief for a lot of people because I have oh, friends and it's like finding time to get to the vet yeah. and all that. It's, it's nice a, to come to your home. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so convenient. Again, so much better for the pets and having that telemedicine aspect as well. It's a relief for me too, knowing that my clients are supported yeah. all the time. It's an amazing thing. So. Before we go, I have to ask, have you had any celebrity clients or if you can't <laughs> reveal are there any extravagant pet owner stories that you'd like to share with us? I've got us? lots of all of those. So, um, <laughs> we would love so names. I have, well, I have a lot of celebrity patients as well, so oh. you don't think of that, right? But my, my Instagram patients, so Ella Bean the dog, oh. the Cardogians, <laughs> Cat Stradamus. Uh, so definitely, if you don't know them, check them out. Uh, Brussels Sprout, they're all <laughs> incredible. Uh, so those are my major. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love they're that. the most fun. They're the most fun to follow. They can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and and then some fun clients I have, uh, Girl With No Job, uh, We Wore What, Ian Axel of A Great Big World. So he's been with me since like the very beginning. So yeah, I've got fun. It's, it's so fun all around. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Well, talk to Lisa. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for you having really, me. For having yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, well, in-home vet care in New York City or the San Francisco Bay Area, check out Fuzzy Pet Health at yourfuzzy.com. That's all from us. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table. Bye, everyone. <laughs>